2024 will be a very difficult year, especially here in and for the United States. Now, we're getting a lot of talk, we're getting a lot of discussions about what 2024 is potentially going to look like. Now, I don't wanna get into all that, but I do wanna tell you 2024 is expected to be bumpy. It's expected to be rough and a difficult year because we have a lot of stuff going on right now. We have an election at the end of the year. We have a bill that we need to get passed right now. We have a war between Russia and Ukraine. We have a war between Israel and Hamas. We have conflicts in the Red Sea, and that's just to name a few. Again, we also have a border crisis. Now, I'm gonna address what's going on here, what the Biden administration is doing at this time, and what White House officials say is the plan moving forward. So buckle up for this, because again, 2024 is going to be bumpy. So before I get into this, all I ask is one thing. It takes two seconds. Go ahead, hit that like button if you enjoyed these daily updates. And now let's begin. So one of the things that we heard for the past couple of months is that the Biden administration understands that there's too many problems arising here in the United States and they have to get rid of some of these before we get into the election at the end of the year. Well, here are some of the problems. And it doesn't matter which one or which few of these problems get addressed, but according to experts, if the Biden administration doesn't buckle down and fix some of these issues, the Biden administration will be a one-term administration, meaning they will not win re-election for the following four years. So here are some of the issues that need to be resolved. We have a government funding bill. That looks like it's going to pass within the next couple of weeks, so that's good. We can check that one off the box and we can get rid of that. The next one is the US-Mexico border crisis. This is something we've heard a lot about lately. Many people have been saying that there's no way this bill gets passed. Well, it looks like this bill is going to get passed, but we don't know exactly how soon. The expectation is potentially in one to two months. That's one that, again, we can check that one off. That one looks like it'll get done. Well, there's four more. We have a Russia-Ukraine war. We have an Israel-Hamas war. We have this Red Sea conflict where shipping vessels do not want to travel through the Red Sea. And then we have more Middle Eastern conflicts as well. This includes Iraq, Iran, and Syria. Now, White House officials say that the Biden administration is working to remove some of these issues from their plate. Government funding bills getting close, that's a good thing. The US-Mexico border crisis, this could potentially be resolved in one to two months, but the, the effects of it, the effects of the bill might take a little bit longer. Now, here's where things are at regarding everything else. Look at this. It says US and allies met secretly with Ukraine on a peace plan. They say Russia wasn't invited and China didn't go either. The reason why they're trying to figure out a peace plan is to figure out how can we move forward? Because as of right now, there is really no indication from Russia when they will stop. The only thing that we know is if Russia takes over the entire Ukraine nation, they'll stop, but they'll stop with Ukraine. Do they keep moving forward? We don't know. That's the problem. And that's where the Biden administration says we have to get this resolved immediately because if not, and Russia gets even closer to NATO allies, if they step foot, invade, attack, whatever, a NATO state, it would be a war, and the United States would back that NATO ally, okay? That's part of the worry. This is why some are worried that we are getting closer to a war. And then we got things like this. Hezbollah, they hit an Israeli base, and they say they do not want a wider war. Right here it says, Hezbollah attacked an Israeli army base with explosive drones deployed from Lebanon on Tuesday. That's this morning. 
hitting the position for the first time in what the Iran backed group declared part of its response to recent Israeli assassinations in Lebanon. Now, here's the problem one group will hit another, and then that other group or country will say, Well, we are doing this in response, but the response that they give them is much greater. So, one was uh, they hit a a certain target and assassinated a uh, you know a high level individual. Well, then they go and respond, and instead of hitting just a specific little target, it's a bigger explosion, right? And so they escalate the situation. Well, this is where uh, Hezbollah says that they don't want a wider war, but yet their actions speak louder than words. This is why fears are growing that Israel, the United States, and Iran's allies are inching closer to a war. And this again is part of the problem. As we get further and further into this, every day that goes by, we're getting closer to that war. And that's the problem, that's a concern. This is something that the Biden administration does not want and cannot afford. They cannot afford a wider war. They just can't because we cannot go into an election and the Biden administration pretty much uh, not started the war, but they escalated situations. And instead of fixing it, instead of resolving the situation, they escalated things. Well, just look at this. Here's another escalation. It says U.S. airstrike foils rocket attack on Iraqi airbase. So down here it says a U.S. airstrike on a rocket launcher late on Monday foiled an attack on the Ain al Assad airbase which hosts U.S. and other international forces in western Iraq. It says the U.S. airstrike destroyed the launcher, and arm, the Army official said, because right now, again, this is about four miles uh, outside of the base, but the United States has 900 troops in Syria, 2,500 more in Iraq. Okay, We have 3,400 troops still over in that area. Well, guess what? Last week, we were told that, <clears throat> that we were going to see the there's a process going through of removing uh, the U.S.-led uh, military coalition. Well, guess what? The Pentagon, okay, they said yesterday they are not planning on uh, uh, withdrawing U.S. troops from Iraq. That's not the plan, okay? And I want to read you a little bit from that. It says, the Pentagon said on Monday it was not currently planning to withdraw its roughly 2,500 troops from Iraq. Despite Baghdad's announcement last week, it would begin the process of removing the U.S.-led military coalition from the country. Air Force Major General said, Right now, I'm not aware of any plans. Uh, uh, we continue to remain very focused on, on the defeat ISIS mission. Okay. So that's where we're at. So the interesting part about all this stuff is there are some talks that we are going to pull out of Iraq. Other talks that we're, no, we're not going to do anything. Some are saying that we're trying to negotiate a peace deal with Russia and Ukraine. The problem is a peace deal, I think, is is not going to happen. I don't think we we get there anytime soon. Another, uh, you know, many articles say that we're trying to negotiate with uh, Israel and Hamas and try to uh, find a way to allow Gaza uh, to govern themselves, right? The, the two-state approach. So we're going to see what happens moving forward. All I can tell you is the Biden administration, their goal is to remove some of these issues off their plate, especially right before an election where voters are going to be looking at them and be wondering, are we in a better place than we were four years ago? If not, does the Biden administration, they do not get the votes that they, they were getting last time? Well, we're going to see. All I can tell you is I will be here every step of the way. I'll fill you in on all the latest news and updates, but that is what we know as of today. So again, thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys on the next one.